Welcome, guys, to another podcast. Today, we're going to go over fundamentals of um, your conscious, subconscious, unconscious process, how you're perceiving your reality, where you're getting your information from. We'll go in in depth into other things like certain foods that you're eating, the negative effects of, of highly inflammatory foods, and we'll go into um, understanding the nature of reality, all the mechanical workings of that, and then ultimately um, these components all add up to an incredible realization for yourself, realizing the power that you have to access your consciousness instantly and affect change in your 3D reality from all dimensions. And don't forget to stay to the end of the video. We do a quick exercise just to tune up your lower dantian and express that through the energy that you generate through that exercise. Enjoy the video. A way that can be walked is not the way. A name that can be named is not the name. Thou is both named and nameless. As nameless, it is the origin of all things. As named, it is the mother of all things. A mind free of thought merged within itself beholds the essence of Tao. A mind filled with thought, identified with its own perception, beholds the mere forms of this world. Tao and this world seem different, but in truth they are one and the same. The only difference is in what we call them. How deep and mysterious the unity is. How profound, how great. It is the truth beyond the truth. The hidden within the hidden. It is the path to all wonder. The gate to the essence of everything. The realization of the mother of all things. No end, no beginning. That is the truth. That is your reality. Realize this. And be, breathe. Become pure consciousness that has always been your true expression. Welcome to the Consciousness of the Way. My divine delectable co-host, High Priestess Jade. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Another profound day on our road to a new year. The simulated one and then the realized one. And I am your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Quinn. Howdy doody. Howdy doody. And so it's I had an interesting conversation just yesterday with a, a new friend, uh, incredible being. And um, he had this revelation from his own intuition, his what he calls his intuits, his uh, guides, whatever. And it was just fundamentally, it was, it was over. I was, I was laughing inside as something that is um, an internal realization of how this consciousness is, is transmuted across all levels as a diamond, a different facet, but we all see things fundamentally in this evolutionary way that creates this um, understanding. And so he was talking about how his his guides had given him this um, viewpoint of, of how all things are created from the polarity, which in essence is the duality of, you know, 
what you perceive as your 3D reality, up and down, in and out, left and right. And he, he was drawing a diagram of this infinity um, a loop and how, you know, with good you have bad. Now, I accept that to a certain degree. It's, it's where you're at to your consciousness level. You will operate in a duality until you don't. And that's how you're able to realize manifestation, magic healing. So he was showing me this loop and he was drawing it out. And he said, you get stuck on the, the lower frequency part. Humans get caught there. And I would have to, you know, want to speak with him more on that and, and, and get a greater understanding. But generally speaking, the essence was the key point between the loop and that is realized as a Taoist, as the zero point energy. He even referred to it as a zero point, and he didn't he didn't correlate it until I shared it with him. But it wasn't initially how he associated it. But he said this is the zero point, and so if you just look at a zero point, it's not up or down, in and out. It's all things. It's just one. It's the singular, which is an expression of what we understand as, you know, the profound hurricane that is the event horizon on the lip of a black hole. And when you understand that, the black hole is abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite. And for a Taoist, we realize that in activating the death of a star, the opening of the black hole, the rising of the red phoenix. And that is actually an access point, if you're looking at a, a torus field in relation to the energy emanation, uh, the magnetic field that is generated from your physical body, it, it is, it's separated in two points. One is yin, one is yang. The zero point is in the center of the physical body. Where would that be? That would kind of be around here, mm -hmm. around the heart area. What a what a coincidence. It's kind of weird. No, see, if it would be your, your, your waist. No, no. When you look at all things from head to toe, the center point would be about where your heart is. What a coincidence. And, of course, when they measure these things from a physicality perspective, from a scientific perspective, from a, uh, a physicist perspective, i.e. quantum physics, you have this zero point. And when it was realized, as I've said to many people before, it's been realized within Taoist practices for tens of thousands of years, we use this energy. It's um, also reflectant on other things that people would uh, refer to as Planck energy. Again, let's get all technical. Planck energy, Max Planck, who, who kind of discovered this, this cohesive glue that we speak of that would be reflectant of Really, it's just a fancy way to sound a little bit more. Uh, it's measured in Planck meters, or, or, or um, most scientists uh, that are OGs that want to seem a little bit smarter than the average bear would speak about it in a Planck measurement, which is referring to Max, Max Planck. Let's get real. It's a zero point energy. And what's realized is through this new language we call physics. It's nothing more than what Taoists have known fundamentally with their, their integration of the universe whispering to them and then their transmutation of the physical human form as we know it, as it's sort of translated, because tens of thousands of years ago, there was a transfer of the realization of the Jade Emperor. And how would that be re recognized within Taoist history? Well, of course, he is the epicenter of the creation of the cosmos. So we have the three pure ones uh, that are the gatekeepers of the creation of the cosmos. Now, the Jade Emperor is another transmutation of that because Jade, Supreme Purity is the keeper of light, Jade Purity is a an immortal another frequency another transmutation of jade emperor who's the keeper of information and then finally highest purity ling bao 
is the keeper of the magic, energy, all things. And now we also reflect on these things in relation to Supreme Puri is representative of your upper Dantian. Also, it's, it's, it's the sun. That's literally the element and the keeper of that particular energy that is within your physical body in the construct and the architecture of the energetics. Then, of course, jade purity is the earth, which is, what a coincidence, a parallel to the transmitted frequency and magnetic field of the earth in of itself. And that is also the same coherent frequency of the heart, which is the electromagnetic field that is being transmitted from you right this very second. And then finally, the lower Dantian, which is the keeper of this particular energy is highest purity, the keeper of magic, energetics, energy in of itself, and that is the moon. And you see, this is where there's a lot of things. I'm sharing stuff with you that has been ass around for many thousands of years, and you've never realized it within Taoism because when you look at the three pure ones, they're in a certain formation. So if I'm looking at the three pure ones, any representation of the three pure ones has been supreme purity, Jade purity, highest purity, always. Actually, no, excuse me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let's go a little bit. Supreme purity, jade purity, highest purity. Now, just that configuration is a misdirection. Because when you are actually in the presence of these frequencies, supreme purity goes on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side. And highest purity goes to the left hand side not the right hand side which can changes the whole frequency you guys can feel it right now just when i'm speaking on it because these are the elements that are transmuted in representation of a physical form that supreme purity also for anyone who's not up on their Taoist og stuff is the immortal representation of latsu And so these elements are put together. You have this um, understanding. We've been doing this for tens of thousands of years. Now, this new friend of mine has had his own in intuitives or uh, guides or whatever, giving him this information. And I just think it's profound because, you know, I've been teaching this for many decades. And then he has this realization just through just frequency, information. He doesn't identify it as anything other than that, and as should he. This is this is him accessing what some people call holes of lamente, amente, whatever the hell it is, including, i.e., you know, uh, Akashic records. This is an access point of information, and mm -hmm. it's only validated. When is it validated? It's validated in your 3D reality. And so... When you can validate something that you've accessed from the ether, either side of, 3D to above, you're going to have this consciousness click. And then all things will be realized. That is what we are speaking of, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. So he had this moment and he called it the zero point. And he didn't call it zero point energy. Then I brought his attention to the black hole energy, which is congruent to the super glue that is all things the the infinite amount of dots that you can't see between you and i and the camera there is no space that's the illusion and it's all interconnected with this zero point energy when you access that you create healing from a higher dimension within this 3d reality this is how we do it this is how we teach people creating um uh, sensory perception that is up and beyond what you consider five senses so what does that mean it means psychic ability, mediumship, channeling. These are all interesting categories, but hey, look, why don't you separate them if you want to make yourself feel all warm and fuzzy. As humans, we like to have what we call a hetero action. We need to start and finish something. So if you want to start becoming a psychic, you want to master that. You want to start becoming a medium, you want to master that. You want to start becoming a channel, you want to master that. Well, what do all these things mean, Sifu? Well, let's look at it this way. Channeling um, in more uh, insight of understanding is you taking a direct spirit energy frequency transmitted through you and you're using yourself as a mouthpiece 
to relate information directly from that spirit energy. It's like literally being an open vessel, the energy comes in and nothing you say is from you. It's coming from this spirit energy and frequency. And then mediumship is kind of like um, another category where you're, you're having a meeting with a spirit and you're relaying their information to others. So it's not like you're, you're being able to take the information in but not being the vehicle. And quite frankly, you know, when someone flips you the bird or tells you to go F yourself, you're immediately taking and transferring all their energy, frequency, vibration, regardless of whether you think you are or not, that's taking place. You're a vehicle. And and I like to remind people, and the Latsu, Jade Emperor, Jade Purity, Highest Purity, Ling Bao, they remind me every day. What do they remind me? All thoughts of my mind are not mine. And all thoughts of your mind are not yours. Or moreover, what do we go a little further? How about we just say, if you accept you are not of this physical body, you, what can harm you? Nothing. Not at all. Because it's perception. That's it. I'm not asking you to go and um, throw yourself off a building or walk out in front of like a peak hour traffic and see whether you get run over or not. These are, it's all perception. Now, I don't doubt for a f- a second, I've never done it, but I don't doubt for a second that you could shift the traffic to walk, to drive around you at will. Absolutely. There's no question. I mean, we do it every day. You're driving down the street. I move people from in front of me with nothing more than my intention. I already said it before I even get in my car and people just literally fall away from my, my sight or my, my path as that's the intention I set. It happens all the time. We all do it. That's just the reality. That's how it works. So, you know, he had this epiphany, and I think it was really cool. And we had this incredible, like, uh, you know, um, in a moment where we're sharing all this stuff. And I look forward to spending more time with, um, um, I think his name is Mick. I really enjoy you, Mick. And so um, these are all just part of, of the journey and realization. But I don't dismiss that. I'm like, The Tao is not God. God is not Jesus. Jesus is not Latsu. What what really makes it really profound is when you can really accept and allow all things. And that means that everything has its own energy, frequency, vibration. When you understand that, you don't kind of clump it all in one category and go, yeah, well, it's all the same, you know. We're all kind of like kumbaya together and it's all you know you see there's there's three wise men and then there's three pure ones and then there's a father the spirit the holy ghost and then people start correlating all these things you still need to realize and this is a realm of man word respect and honor i don't really use these words but people can fundamentally gravitate to understanding what that means respect and honor a different level of consciousness That, you know, Jade and I are sitting at each end of a table and we're looking at an object. She says it one way, I see it the other. That's just the reality of all things. That's the nature of of reality. And when you understand that and you realize nothing has title, that's a shift of change. It's not just talking head sort of, you know, regurgitating this word consciousness over and over again. And, you know, he and I were able to share in information without, like, there being a diminishing, uh, uh, diminish of no return. And what does that mean? It means that, well, one person has one agenda, one has another, and then all of a sudden, you know, if we're not getting enough out, then we're, you know, we're losing sight of um, what I really want to talk about or what he really wants to talk about. Now, we were just listening. I would talk most of the time. I tend to. That's my problem. Is it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. In any case, he embraced it and he enjoyed it. He shared his material. He shared with mine. And that's real consciousness, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. You know, accepting everything as is. The 72-hour challenge that we go on about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a new year. We've gone over several podcasts 
and we're leading towards our new year, which is February 10th of 2024. It's the year of the dragon. Yeah, baby. It's on like Donkey Kong. And, you know, we're still appreciating and very grateful that, you, you know, you have entered another 12-month cycle of your reality, and we can still receive and accept that as a new year um, and realize the, the rippling effects of that. Now, when we talk about zodiac, we talk about the 12 animals that we reflect on within you know, um, um, astrology, numerology, within um, Taoism, moreover, you know, something a little bit more generic like the Chinese culture, there are 12 animals that are reflecting of, of the 12 um, uh, uh, different cycles within the universe. And so we're, we're talking about uh, representation of uh, uh, constellations, galaxies, the cosmos, the universe. These are all relevant points of access. And you can start correlating things. But understand this, and this is something that may be a, a shocker to you when you realize you are the universe the universe is you you're all things that means that you embody everything you're not just stuck in a lane where someone goes well you were born on this date and your animal is this so now you realize it's this if you're all things and this is how you access pure consciousness this is how you access instant manifestation instant healing instant magic that only takes place when you are absent of title it doesn't happen any other way. That means that your your some of your life experiences are irrelevant. You put them aside, and they're no longer um, limiting. Yes, limiting. And so when you access it, then every day is a good day to be you. Mm -hmm. Every day is an amazing day to be realized, and it's re re reflected on your your offering. Mm -hmm. And you can still appreciate whatever that um, representation is. If you feel this connection to your animal or your year or your month or your zodiac sign, feel connected by that, but also don't limit yourself that you can't feel connected to another sign or another month or another year or another animal as well. You're not just bound to every 12 years I'm going to have good luck and every other year is going to be, you know, average. You don't have to be bound to that. You can hold on to everything that resonates with you and, and um, not have that just be a reflection of, you know, uh, I was born in this instance. So th this is my only opportunity to, you know, progress or succeed. And, you know, this is a framing of your reality, right? right? So we go deeper into conscious, subconscious, unconscious, three layers of your awareness. Ultimately, you want to be fully awoke. I, I, no, actually, I don't know about that. <laughs> awakened. But, uh, awakened. I think and you want to be conscious. So when you transmit this brainwave, of a gamma brainwave, which makes you highly conscious. And um, I reflect on that when I'm channeling or doing healing. You want to go 40 hertz and above, you can stop measuring it. You'll know. It. It's a feeling. This is what I keep telling people. It's a feeling. And that's another thing that we validated with each other. He was speaking on the feeling. Yes. And that's another thing that is so important. As you know, on our channel, we constantly go over it. It's everything is a feeling. Yeah. And so, you know, realizing the power of that and so entry points an obe you know do you use it from a sleep paralysis perspective a, 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 a near-death experience something is going to evoke your consciousness to realize this is now you're you're out of this 3d reality and other things are taking place and they're so palpable they're so tangible you go out there, you tinker with a few things, it's realized instantly, and then your 3D reality changes. And you're like, mm -hmm. whoa, holy moly. What is up with that? What is going on that this can have such a profound effect? Because everything is instant. Remember, you go quoting other people, energy can't be created or destroyed. That means it's constant. There is no end to it. 
And so when you start putting limitations on a framework where someone tells you there are laws to the universe, um, I'm sorry, but I would have to disagree with that because that's a framework making you limited. The universe has no moral compass. It is now. Future, present, and past are happening right now. And in all dimensions at once, your, your um, journey of awakening is to cultivate your ability to operate in all those dimensions at once. That's why Taoism is so profound, because we have a system that generates that level of consciousness, and that's been going then handed down from generation to generation for thousands of years, and it's moving energy with your mind, moving energy with your breath, creating that realization and validating it in this 3D reality. You want to be able to go out on a higher plane, operate in that, and have it realized in your 3D reality. And know that it's all happening at once. There are no exceptions. All these things are happening instantaneously at once, regardless of how you perceive things. Does this make sense? So... All is one, one is all. All is one, one is all. And this is something that we also agreed on, which I thought was really profound. And understand that, you know, this will will cycle through. Um, uh, you know, recently, you know, we've had uh, channeling mediumship through with uh, Athoth, one of our last guests, and, you know, a little uh, handout from Hermes. These are crazy energies bro but mm -hmm. people are buying into this stuff and not realizing that you know this information is out there for a reason realize why you need to be remember all thoughts of your mind are not yours so what is what's compelling you to pursue this material and then what exactly are you resonating with this because there's a lot of people right now that are now referring to is thought jesus is jesus thought who's trading what who where and how Listen, it's only relevant if Thoth or Jesus are even relevant to you. Right. I don't, you know, I, I've, I've I experienced those energies. I've operated with those energies. And recently, moreover, the last guest that I had realized that um, when real time, when we were having our uh, podcast about the information that was coming through. And so that was an even crazier, you know, awakening and so then that sort of turned into you know a whole heap of uh, wtf moments for for my friend uh uh you know arcturus and so here we have a new year we've started going over the general fundamentals uh, being attentive to uh, movement exercise blood flow um eating eating when what where and how um eating i'm not so concerned with i would just want you to be mindful of something that's more purified um because you're being exposed to you know the elements uh you know uh glyphosate for one you know i.e roundup and that's on everything and so recently we made it very apparent that you know i spoke to a lot of people they're now creating some type of like, um, what do you call it? Wax that they put on all fruits and vegetables, organic or conventional, with the intention to say, hey, look, we're, we're helping you preserve your food so it lasts longer because then it's less labor, it's less intensive, it's less this. Now, what, what you're not understanding is this particular wax is not just wax. It has an array of seed oils and other chemicals in it that you are now basically permeating your organic fruit. So now you can't even really... Organic fruit is not organic. It's just basically a treasure trove of like chemicals that will ultimately poison you at a, a more rapid rate. Now, I'm not going to get into the semantics of what what the intention is, just realize that if you think you're just eating organic food, you're not anymore. That's like, and the more you see this label, whatever it is, I think it's called the peel, people are like, uh, the second that came out, three pure ones told me about that. And I was like, whoa, that's not, uh, 
that's not of a higher uh, virtuous like uh, signal. No, it's it's more an ominous sort of like uh, realization because if you're eating fruits and vegetables, you're not going to the trouble of like um, poisoning yourself with these these cellular degrade degradation um, through the means of highly inflammatory. Uh, uh, you know, industrial oils, i.e. seed oil, which is another word to say, a.k.a. trans fat, all these things that have been banned throughout the world but seem to fundamentally just sit around because our population needs to be, you know, uh, regulated or moreover. This then returns back to the Darwin's theory of, like, um, evolution and the three points of regulation that we use. What is that? Oh, disease, world war, and famine. And they seem to still be, just as Latsu would say, wash, rinse, and repeat. Fear, death, and destruction. The same cycle. So understand that you can make decisions that will benefit you just from what you eat, when you eat, how you eat. And this comes back to the framework of fasting. And fasting is not about in lack of. It's about regulation and enhancing the operation of this tuning fork. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's not about calorie restriction. No. And it's, it's not about... It's about the efficiency of letting your body digest and then giving it the ability to also... Um, heal and and fix and and eliminate all the other little problems if it's only digesting and it's not doing anything else then you're not giving it the opportunity to flush out clean out purge all of the the little tiny uh ailments that turn into bigger things if left unnoticed right great great observation jade i mean that's really what's going on here so you know we go over that we've gone over just today we're talking about you know this realization of consciousness everywhere you know mm -hmm. all of a sudden people and are becoming more aware of their intuitive innate default and realization of how powerful they are as an individual as a collective I was going to say, and I think a really important part of that, just like you were talking about earlier, speaking to the sky, is just because you might look at something differently in your consciousness or have a difference of an opinion doesn't um, dismiss or discredit someone else's. They're, they're, we've been very um, programmed and conditioned lately that, well, if I'm right, then you're wrong. Right, that's or a if, duality. Exactly. If I believe this, then this discredits right, your right. your opinion of it. Right. And it's and it's absolutely not the case because it's not there isn't you can have your consciousness and someone can have their consciousness and it's not a causation. It isn't right. a just cuz I think one way that means your way isn't you know, uh, validated at all. Right, right. It's like everything can be validated. Right. Everything can be as one. I can see blue. You can see orange. It doesn't mean blue is better than orange. Uh, it doesn't mean orange is better than blue. And we have to kind of get out of this mindset that, you know, everyone wants us to stay in is that just because I see it one way, that somehow lessens or increases the way you see it. Well, that's a really, I mean... Yeah. I mean, that's really profound what I you're saying, Jay, because it's I mean, really it, it literally goes back to this language, this very new language that we call physics, right? Yes. And so, Jade is literally making a point of are you no Newtonian in your thought process or are you quantum in your thought process? So, what is that? See, for what are you talking about? Well, it's on a much deeper layer. You are being fed this programming and you're expressing it through your very action what you believe is your consciousness which is maybe five percent of what you're actually operating in so let's go to that newtonian is cause and effect everything operates separately and quantum is all things operate at the same time mm -hmm. now um there's still this uh, mindset this is where uh, uh my new friend mick and i may have a a, a different perceived 
understanding because there's a layering effect. You stay in duality, that's fine. The second you raise above that duality, which would be the 3D reality, all things are happening at once. Once that happens, we're not going into, you know, because a lot of people talk about dark night of the soul, what goes up must come down. If it's all this good Car- stuff, karma. you have to, you know, yeah, all this good stuff, then you have to have bad stuff. Eh, sorry. No, absolutely not. When you realize you're all things, you generate as the universe. If it's good to be you, it will be good to be you. You know, you're again creating this limitation by believing that the laws of of the universe must with good give me bad. That's your belief system. Remember, your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with. Be all or end all, beginning and end. That's it. Understand that when you operate that way, it will be realized that way. If you believe that your life is one big, you know, fun factory of just basically getting in, you know, you know, an extended Hummer limo and your every day of your life is drinking champagne and partying 24 hours a day, then that will be your reality. Now, if you believe that your life is founded in the construct of using fear as a catalyst to your realization, then you're going to be in an, a, a mindset where nothing but more fear will be generated. The universe gives you present moment. So if you believe it, it becomes realized. That's how it works. Now, the filtering of that, as we are Taoists, the filtering of our whispering of the universe to our realization, to our lineage, our history, all the things that are transmuted into the very essence and understanding and the mechanisms, the ancient practices that we teach people, is nothing more than that. Mm Mm-hmm. And so you can resonate or not resonate. We're, we are nothing more than sharing with you the things that fundamentally help us frame our reality and what we believe as the truth. And my truth is the only truth I need to be concerned with. Your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with. And you can integrate all things because they are all things. So what does that mean? Catholicism, Taoism, Christianity, um, uh, Hinduism, uh, Judaism, they're all part of the collective you can focus on one and integrate the other you can be all things you can immerse yourself with everything realize when you realize you are the universe that chill that was sent up your spine that Mm -hmm. that realization whoa seafood what does that mean i can have my cake and eat it yes that was the misconception that was a misdirection when someone created that throw away they throw away that throw away statement is nothing more than a mind trap you can't have your cake and eat it too says who and that is a mind trap right there Mm -hmm. as simple as those words are remember we have come to a realization it's validated in many ways Everything is words, numbers, letters, symbols. They're integrated into your DNA. They're recognized that way, and they're a transmutation of the very expression of who you are for past generations, hundreds of generations before the one that is realized for you in this physical reality, 3D reality right now. And so that's why you gravitate to music. You gravitate to uh, uh, information. It's all integrated in you. That's where you're going. That's how you get it. And of course, we do things like give you past life readings, give you nine readings up to this one, and then it's realized that way. Mm-hmm. And so really powerful things take place when you do this because you put the pieces together to realize who, who you are, what you are, your expression of all things. I'm sharing with you the inner workings of consciousness perceived as a Taoist in this reality and as a reincarnation of an eternal immortal, I'm sharing that with you. You can take it. You can embrace it. You can, I want this. I don't want that. You can take all of it. You can add it to your repertoire. You can be all things at once and realize when you are all things at once, then the stuff is going to start happening for you. Then all of a sudden, your manifestations become reality. Your healings become reality. Your magic becomes reality. You work from these higher dimensions that are all taking place at once. And then they turn up here. Yeah. And this is the slowest frequency. And that's why you have, uh, you know, more ability to screw up in, in essence 
the way you transmit your consciousness, the second you start accessing higher dimensions and you're consciously aware of that, things realize real fast. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, wow. And, and you see, most people, it's like, it's all happening at once, it's all happening. And so what most people do is they separate themselves because they have their personality viewpoint. And so they can, and what's the key component that we teach everyone? Emotions. So don't let your emotions control you, you control your emotions. See if that sounds very testosterone, that sounds very controlling. Um, yeah, because that's the misdirection, that's the distraction, that's what's making you limited, is you perceive this simulation as your reality when it's not. Mm -hmm. But for you to go tell yourself what you want to hear or tell yourself the truth is the next level up. And so it's all just rhetoric and words until it's not. You know what you know, you don't know what you don't know, you know what you don't know, you know what you know. All this comes in at show me. When you can show me, then all of a sudden I have a different view of reality. I have a different process -y. So you have to be able to replicate it. And the simplicity of it is we give you a visual audible experience creating a kinesthetic charge that is the way 126 and you become the master keeper creator of your reality. It's on you. You do it. It's all yeah. yours. And that's the profound part is... I see this over and over again with people. I've been doing this well before we created this app using the material of of our teachers, ancient practices with Taoism that are thousands of years old. We define it as a contemporary offering of an ancient practice. It's realized in this app and you're able to replicate it mm -hmm. because that's when you start validating yourself. You're not being chased away by your emotions. You're validating your experience. You're confirming it. That's when it becomes real to you and your truth is the only truth. Your reality is the only reality you need to be concerned with. And that's where, you know, you can instantly, you know, pop off with these type of statements and all the the ratatouis will come up from, you know, the lowest frequency to go, how dare you? You watch your authoritarians just rise above you. You want you're like, hang on, I had no idea you were an author whoa and you look around you go hang on stuff am i in am i in nazi germany like i, I had no idea i was hanging out with the gestapo mm -hmm. it's not until you you know put out statements like that that create someone's ability to realize they are all powerful and all knowing that is the seed of realization when you share that with someone and they collect with they connect with it and they realize holy crap what I, oh, me and then it's like authoritarians that want to control want to manipulate want to limit will be very concerned with you making statements like that mm -hmm. all th you know you know your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with Whoa. well that's getting back to like my all of a sudden uh, if I have an opinion or a perspective on something, it's like, no, you can't think that way. Mm -hmm. Because if you think that way, you're X, Y, and Z. Right. And it's like, well, no, the, no, I can think that way. And you can have your perception. Oh, no, 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 no. It's this way. And it's like, well, you can have your perception. No, no, no. It's this way. It's this way. And it's like, you start, what's you a, start what's seeing a classic um, one? come out. Um, uh, you cannot refute that. <laughs> And I'm like, let's use some big words. What does that mean? You you can't question the information because that's the nature of reality. What is the nature of reality? You reading a book because some agency has told you that it's in a curriculum within some sort of like mind prison programming and that's your realization? Hey, I, I spent $200,000 mm -hmm. to be mind controlled. Okay. I'm really impressed that you were able to generate $200,000 to be mind controlled. Not the fact you're being mind controlled because that is your perception. Mm -hmm. Your so truth. Your truth. And in most cases, most programs across the board throughout the world, if you're learning it within an institution, i.e. college, university, higher education, academia, or anything of that nature, are antiquated perceptions right down to just the evolution of mankind and the human genome 
That in of itself has been in question for the last 30 years. And even the scientists today refuse to refute the past information that has now been validated as not true. That, you know, there wasn't this evolution of man as if we started from some chimpanzee and turned into human form the way you see us today. Our expression of our genetic um, strand, i.e. DNA strand, has been like this from what these new age scientists, you know, um, um, physicists are looking at 200,000 years. Maybe. I'd, I'd beg to say that's more like millions. But hey, look, you know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. And when I say that, all you go is like, whoa, I kind of thought that. The fact that Sifu and Jade said that, it's like, I kind of had this intuitive feeling that I, I wasn't coming from some chipmunk or some, you know, troglodyte that, you know, uh, formed his brain and, and the only time it was realized was from eating meat. Again, another misconception. You know, this struggle that we have when, when it comes to, you know, what's the, the real nutritional um, value to create longevity within the physical body? You know what it is? Less is more. That's it. See, for what does that mean? It means that all you got to do is tune your machine to become more efficient. There is nothing more powerful to do that than fasting. That's it. Because you come to a realization how efficient your body works. You have all these uh, what we call metabolic disorders. You want them to disappear. Trust me, the second you put your attention to fasting, you get a handle of your blood sugar level. You get a handle mm -hmm. of your, your liver enzyme count, which are two major fundamental. Your spleen response, which is then. These are three major elements of contention when it comes to metabolic disorder. Now, metabolic disorder is just an array of many things, but it all starts with this one seed that we call insulin resistance. And so by taking in seed oils, excess uh, processed foods, excess uh, 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 processed sugars, all this leads to your body's resistance to operate efficiently. So what does that mean, Sifu? Well, what, 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 you know, what, 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 I'm a keto guy. If I'm eating nothing but fat and protein, it should be good. If I'm, if I'm just eating, well, this would be true. The realization is, you you know, if I actually showed you a, a liter of oil for your engine from your local, you know, um, uh, AutoZone, AutoZone, and I said, hey, use this to cook your your fish with you'd look at me and go what the you're out of your mind mm -hmm. but because it's sort of transmuted pretty much in the same sort of format into what we perceive as like vegetable oil canola oil uh, uh sunflower oil uh, uh grapeseed oil rapeseed oil uh, i don't even want to know what that really means but there is a rapeseed oil it's kind of scary in any case these are all variations of you know the bigger companies coming to this realization that nothing should go to waste. What does that mean? Because back in you know the 30s and 40s, we were using what you use today to fry your fish with, fry your fry your uh, fries with, do all this stuff that you you're exposed to within you know your fast food restaurant, your five di five star dining restaurant, or maybe you're even using it at home. We were using these particular hydrogenated oils to lubricate machinery. Say so what? 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 Yeah. So that sort of transmuted into, but hey, look, it's odorless. It, it, it's tasteless. What the? Let's, let's use it to cook with. It's far cheaper. And then we use it in all different levels. So it's not just no longer just something we're lubricating machinery with. We can now translate it into selling it to a whole new audience. Then we'll remove other things that would be more mm -hmm. beneficial to your physicality. And then you have this idea that I'm doing the best I can to take care of myself. And so if you're vegan, if you're, a pro, uh, you're an animal eater, whatever it is, you're so divided because you don't realize you're getting poison on every angle. Whether you're eating meat, whether you're not eating meat, it all comes down to 
how is your food prepared? And so you're a vegan, you go, I'm doing my right thing for the environment, for blah, 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 blah. I'm doing my right thing. So I'm eating tofu. I'm eating, I'm eating uh, things that are non-dairy, non-animal-based. you know, animal based. They're, they're equivalents to their simulated versions of the same thing, but they're not. And they're even more poisonous for you than actually eating real meat, eating eggs, eating butter, eating if all this could, stuff. If you could find real meat. Right. And a lot of that stuff you can't even find real. And so then you have the contention is, is oh, let me go out and eat some meat. Where are you going to find some meat that's, you know, are organic grass fed? And then you look at the little fine print and goes, finished with corn. <laughs> so, so we've gone and let this animal graze itself within a field to get all the nutrients of just basically eating off off the land and then they finish it off with corn which is GMO, GMO genetically modified um, basically you know poison and so we get deeper into you know how things are being programmed within your own DNA strand your RNA strand is being programmed by the food that you eat what are you talking about that sounds like some crazy scientific oh, yeah damn straight it is right down to things that they use today and have for the last three years, they are programmed to alter your own DNA expression. You know what they are. You can come to the conclusion. They don't call it it an RNA blur for no reason. Why is it called an RNA blur? Because it affects your Xerox copy of your DNA. Sifu, what does that mean? This sounds like some type of conspiracy. And that is another fallacy. By using that word, you dismiss people. It has been integrated into society over the last 70 years to do exactly that. You don't even realize you're being programmed. You don't even realize when you use conspiracy theory that you are the one that is being controlled by your thought processes. And it's an easy way to dismiss someone's position, someone's value system, someone's belief system by using the word conspiracy, words conspiracy theory. Yeah, it goes back to that thing. It's like we don't just say, oh, well, that's your opinion and I have a different viewpoint. We say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, an instant dismissal of, well, you're wrong, I'm right. Right. but I believe this way, so... Because I believe this way, it doesn't matter what you think, it's just wrong. But, but, but the, Jay, the biggest thing is like, they don't even realize they're being programmed. Absolutely, like, like who, absolutely. When, when you use that position, you are running off someone else's agenda. Mm-hmm. The fact that you, you have come to that conclusion and you believe it's your own conclusion, your own processes, you are instantly becoming limited. Right. So it's like, it's like, the but, but you're using someone else's pro. Someone has programmed you to perceive your reality this way, right? And it's like, the hang idea. on, whoa, 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 Sifu, how dare you? I'm an independent thinker. I'm an individual. You can't fool me. So you assume that until you hear this podcast and go, holy moly, I am a roboto. Well, yes. but what? But what is the idea? You're saying I'm an independent thinker, I'm thinking for myself, you're a conspiracy theorist. Right. Literally, a conspiracy theorist is questioning the norm. Right. Which is an right. so independent thinker, thinker that which, you think you but are. But then you're but dismissing you're, someone else being one. Di- or, or, you're, or, or your perception of Exactly. Being one. Or you're saying, I'm right, I'm an independent thinker, you're wrong, you're a conspiracy theorist right. when when you're calling yourself Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean it again it's, And again it's like a, it's another unraveling of the onion. A hundred percent. And the realization is when you understand that you're being programmed by all of this and you know, I've I I know of people that have spent exorbitant amounts of money, you know, a lifetime of, of savings on their children's education to to have them realize that they're just programmed bots that are you know basically you know the human sacrifice of of academia academia in of itself is a programming you know and people are coming to that realization 
but it's and taking. And what does it get back to? All thoughts of your mind I are not, not yours. yours. Right, right. And yet people, when we say that or you say that, I mean, it's it's either it's either like uh, an, an, an awakening and an acceptance or an instant an instant <clears throat> triggering and that's of like freak. all thoughts of your mind and, are not and, yours and it's like no 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 and, and intuitively <laughs> you could realize it's a frequency absolutely so you operate in a lower frequency that's going to offend you oh you operate 100%. in a higher frequency and you're going to be like thank you for understanding <clears throat> me and thank so, you for making it clear exactly so all of a sudden you can be start you can start to decipher the information that you're receiving the information mm-hmm. you see if you if you truly believe you are the universe, the universe is you. That's a real simple way to get right there instantly. Yeah. And it's like, understand all thoughts of your mind are not yours. Understand that when you don't make it about yourself, boom, it's realized. Mm-hmm. Like, hang on, what? If I don't make it about myself, then I'm not getting like caught up in the semantics of how someone perceives their reality and whether they talk to me a certain way, think a certain way, do a certain thing. It's all reflected on me when, you know, that's humanness. That's the limitations of the human being. And then, of course, you draw that self to you because you are a magnet, realizing that the magnet operates no matter whether you're in a duality or you're all is one, one is all. So when you realize the magnet is going on no matter what, whether you are operating in duality or you're operating as the universe, you get... The good stuff, you get the bad stuff. It depends on what you believe in, and it will or be you materialized. Just get stuff. And you get all this different stuff because mm-hmm. you are the ma- always. The baseline is realizing you're the magnet. Mm-hmm. When you realize you're a magnet, yeah, all that other stuff, all bits are off. That's where you have to start. That's your realization. Knowing that makes things very, very simple. Very simple. Extremely simple. Mm-hmm. And so, that magnet is operating 24-7, 365. Mm-hmm. And so whether you perceive your reality as you are the universe or you perceive your reality as a human limited in a 3D reality. In duality. All this stuff is coming at you. Mm-hmm. So how you, what you do with it is up to you. Exactly. And that's where people go, God, why did you do this? I prayed to you. I worshipped you. I I. I gave you the shirt off my back. I read in the Bible that told me that, you know, if I do all these things and I surrender, that I will be realized that I'm not materialistic, blah, 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 blah. And it's not happening because you had a perception that your virtue signaling, as we put it within Taoism, and straight from the scripture we talk about this, when you act in virtue, you have none whatsoever. It's a simulation. When you are selfless, you're not thinking, you're knowing. Mm-hmm. And when you're knowing, you're, you're feeling. feeling. You're feeling. When you're thinking, you're processing, what do I do? If I do this, I give this homeless guy five bucks and I go in there and I donate my time to, you know, uh, uh, St. Jude's with, uh, you know, can- kids with cancer. And then I go and help my neighbor across the street because she's an old lady. And then, you know, I go and I, I uh, uh, donate money to UCSF or whatever the story is. You are operating on a programming where you're looking for an outcome that's going to enrich you due to your programming, your virtue signaling. And in truth, that comes with an emotional content which keeps you in the duality, which will reflect on lack of. Mm -hmm. And so all these processes bring you to that point. Yeah. When you're at one with all things, you're just selfless, baby. You're just you're just on, and when you think it, it becomes realized. Boom. Yep. The bag of money, the 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 perfect life, the perfect job, the perfect scenario, and it's a frequency. You feel it deep within yourself. And guess what? You're abundant, timeless, endless, limitless, infinite. There is no end. You don't need to be. Going, well, you know, the universe tells me it's a polarity thing and with good comes bad. Again, that's, f- that's, that's a limited perception and that's within a duality and that's completely fine. But realize as you continually raise above it all, you can have an answer to anyone's question. Well, how are you doing? And your answer will be the same every single time. It's good to be me. Mm-hmm. 
as it should be. You know, the, when people reflect on things and go, look, there's a polarity of good and evil, good and bad, yin and yang. This is a baseline, right? Which if you look at a yin and yang symbol, it's really a, a microscopic subatomic viewpoint of an atom. What are the chances of that? All more reflective of basically a fractal pattern. Mm -hmm. More reflective of a black hole. Mm -hmm. More reflective of all things happening at once. And so the misdirection when someone looks at yin and yang, it's good and bad. No, if you look at it, the yin and yang is operating. You're seeing it right there. And what does that mean when you're seeing the yin and yang in front of you? It's happening right now, baby. All of it at once being realized. Oh, Sifu, that's deep. Mm -hmm. As in the present be. moment. In the present moment. Yin and yang is happening at once. All things merge, converge within itself, becomes realized as the universe, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how it, that's the reality. And mm -hmm. that's the misdirection. That's where people get caught up. Well, it's good and bad. It's high and low. It's up and down. No, when you look at a yin and yang, it's happening right in front of you, all of it. Yep. And that means that you can express yourself as the universe, that shiver up your spine, that pool, holy crap, Sifu, this is crazy. That means that the actual image of yin and yang is showing you all things at once. That's the power of that symbolism. It's not a symbolism. It's a realization. That's mm -hmm. a snapshot of right now, yep. the present moment. Mm -hmm. Booyah. And that's that. That's where you find that selflessness. That's where you find that frequency. You vibrate with it. Um, I had a story the other day where I was waiting um, for Son to come pick me up, and my phone happened to die. And there was a guy there, and I was at, and I was talking to him for a minute, and I was like, "Oh no, my!" And he saw, you know, and I said, "Oh no, my phone died." And he's, and I said could I please just borrow your phone so I can call and make sure I get picked up? And he was like, sure, no problem. And it was like, he didn't wake up that morning, put his shoes on, put his favorite jacket on to go, hey, at eight o'clock, I'm going to meet this woman and she, her phone's going to die and I'm going to let her borrow my phone. It was, it was this present moment. Like he didn't even think right. about it. He just saw that like, hey, I needed some help. And he was like, I'm here. Sure, you can borrow my phone. And it, and it was, and I was like, I was like watching it in slow motion go like, this is this frequency. This is this, that selflessness. This is this, no, this feeling, this knowing you're not waking up and, and processing it and analyzing it and, and, um, uh, planning it out. It just happens. And that is the flow. That's this effortless action. That, this is everything that we talk about. Like you said, that yin and yang, everything is in front of you right now. And it's that present. And, you, and, it, and it almost does happen so fast that you don't even realize it until... And that's the Wu Ji. Exactly. Until you have the reflection. Right. It, because it is. It is so fast and you're in it. And you're in it that it's like... Oh wait! I actually have to think back to realize, you know, what just took place. Right, right, and that's the Wu Ji, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. gentlemen and ladies. And understanding that profound realization is where that's our bag, baby. Yeah. Second to one, none. That's why Taoism is so powerful. It is. It's foundational, and yes, you sound like a salesman. Damn straight. Yeah. Because I know intuitively within myself how powerful it is. And over decades, I've helped people realize that they can integrate the foundations of this understanding, the whispering. Of, I would define Taoism as the whispers of the universe realized now. That's like so beautiful. And and realize that. That's what, that's what Taoism truly is. And so I've had Catholic, Catholics, yep. Jews... Jewish people, um, Hindus, Christians. Atheists. I atheists. Mean, people who believe in nothing. Adopt some of the principles yep. and apply them to their reality, however they choose to. Because that's what we always remind people. Mm -hmm. Use this template to create your reality. It's not about going, oh, 
I'm just going to, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I have to contribute and I have to be at one with all things. And it's got to be about, you know, the Tao all day, every day. Um, no, that's how we start, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. And it all goes back to, like we said, your truth is the only truth and the most important thing that you need to focus on. Damn straight. Mm-hmm. And so you have this realization um, that when you start to become conscious and you wake the F up and you really are, you take back the unconscious process then all of a sudden, all bets are off. Mm -hmm. And we have go time. Thunderbirds are go. And that realization is really powerful. So um, I would say to, to anybody with this new year coming upon us or you're experiencing your new year right now, all these fundamentals, I mean, we've gone over a lot today. I mean, yeah. Uh, in essence, the, the the bigger message from what Latsu was sharing with us, because anything transmitted from me really is a Latsu. I'm, again, all thoughts of my mind are not mine. Mm -hmm. People are like, my goodness, you have such a deep understanding of all these things. I don't know anything, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen <laughs> ladies. It's just information that is handed to me. And when I'm around something, if I grab a book or something, I literally touch it and through osmosis absorb what's valuable in the book and it's realized as something that I share with you. And that's just part of the attunement that I have within this realization, within this reincarnation that I have right now. And that's just how it is. And I'm very grateful for that. But also, I can teach anyone else to do that too. Mm -hmm. None of the, the you know, people go, you've got your gifts. Some people have this. Some that, again, is a very limited viewpoint, guys. I always remind you, you could listen to Jade and I and literally be realized and anything that I've attuned myself to, you will be attuned to instantaneously breaking the four-minute mile um, realization. And and many people have. We get lots of comments all the time. Oh, my goodness. This many happened, people that happened, have. this happened, that happened. Because that's all it took. It's like, you know, hanging out mm -hmm. and you get a whiff off. You know, maybe... You know, it's the spiritual doobie that we're rolling here. Contact high. And you got a contact high. That's the realization. But your neurology speaks to you. That's how it works. Yeah. And then on a deeper rippling effect, we're all integrated. So we're all operating at the same time within all dimensions. This is being taken place for you. And so you run with it and go, Jade and Sifu showed me this today. Boom. I'm, I've just applied it to my thought processes that aren't mine that I've realized, access of consciousness, a shivering effect, the feeling that is realized, and it's now real to me, holy crap, and I can manifest this and heal that and do this, and it will be confirmed by you in your 3D reality. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that, any closing thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you may have? No, I, I really just get back to this point that like, your perception is so valuable and important and and that value for it also doesn't dismiss anyone else's perception or consciousness at that time. Right. And we are constantly, just like everything is in the present, we're constantly shifting all the time where that just changes. Mm -hmm. So what happened five minutes ago is totally different to, you know, five hours from now. We're going to bid you adieu as she closes her perception you can open or close your eyes. We will f fall out of this incredible transmission and realization of all things with a quick uh, tune-up. We're going to just gather, absorb the riches within our lower Dantian. And so this is also starts with you know the ignition, the seed of that starts with the breath. And let's use that breath. Okay, so we're going to breathe in and out through the lower Dantian that's going to fuel that, that internal fire, which is the yin energy, quite frankly. It's the merging. It's the, it's the magnetism, the magnetic fluidity that is realized. This is something that is something else, right? So I want you to breathe in and out through your mouth nine times and at the end hold it 
and then watch it express itself as it transmits through your physical body. So without any further ado, thank you, Jade, for all the things that you share with us. And we will go ahead and attune ourselves to our lower dantian when you're ready, breathing in and out through the mouth. Hold. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release. And that. It's so powerful how yin turns into yang. That combination of the two, the convergence of the two, the merging of the two, dissolving of conscious and unconscious process, making it as one, that realization. And with that, I want to thank you, anyone in the distance or present. Stay with that transmission, that realization, that evoking of energy until you're ready to climatize yourself to a new level of consciousness. It can take one second, could take five hours. You stay with that energy. And with that, I am your humble servant and Sifu, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. <laughs>